welcome back from the quick break. This is still Sana Pon Showbiz TV with me, Evergreen Asanto, and this is our Power Pack feature interview segment. This morning we are talking about publishing in the music industry and I have been joined by Paul God and I hope most of you remember him. He was here one time, he spoke about copyright. Yeah. Paul, you're welcome. Thank you. Do you know I didn't know you were into rap? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Until after you left, the last time you came here. Mm, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. And when did that start? Oh, that's um, more than 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Yes. And you do it alongside um, managing? Yes. Yes, I do. Then you do a lot of things. Oh, yes. Yes. I do a lot of things. Oh, I see. <laughs> that's quite interesting. Yeah, thank you. You are looking good, by the way. Oh, you are looking good, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today we are talking about publishing in music yeah. or the music industry, um, Ghana music industry to be precise. Yeah. And the last time I, I even realized that when we were talking about copyright, we did a little bit of publishing. Yes. But I'm also happy and excited about the fact that today we are doing it on its own. We are focusing and looking at publishing yeah. in general because the last time you mentioned that it was very important. Yeah. So I want you to remind us what publishing means. Okay. and the importance of publishing. Yes, so um, publishing is the process um, whereby a musician or a publisher um, right. actually monetizes their crafts so that um, if they are signed up with a publisher or a PRO, which is a publishing right organization, right. they can collect royalties um, of their music on behalf of the artist or a composer. Yes, so okay. that's what publishing is. Right. And why do we need to, why, why is it important? It's very important. It's, it's, it's very important because then if um, you're a musician right. and you just distribute your music and you don't have a publishing deal, then it means you're not going to get royalties off your music, meaning that when they play your songs on radio, you're not going to get any quota for them playing your, your, your music on radio or television. Or even um, at, at, at a pub, when they are using it commercially, they are not going to get anything from your music. So it's very important. Very important. Yes. Very, then very I, think, important. I think that that is um, as a result or that is some of the reasons why a lot of people are not getting their royalties. Yes. And they yeah. forget about that aspect and they come out and they blame the music industry or music or gamble that they are not getting Yes, yes, it's true. You know, um, Gamro and um, other bodies that uh, have to do with the welfare of musicians um, have their role to play. But to, as musicians, we also have a role to play. We need to have the proper education on publishing so that we know that, okay, then um, based on what I know on publishing, I have to do my due diligence um, to make sure that I'm in good standing with uh, whatever craft I have so that at the end of the day, I can distribute my music, make sales off my streaming, the streaming services, be it uh, Spotify, Apple Music. Then after that, when my song is being used commercially, um, that's as a, uh, at a pub or they are, they are using it for an advert on television, I can get a quota of whatever they are using my music for, my intellectual property. Okay. So it's very important that um, artists, we know about publishing. Okay, so are there any like publishing companies here in Ghana? Oh, so um, at least every country has at least one um, uh, publishing rights organization, okay. which is a PRO or a right. collection management organization, a CMO. Um, in Ghana, we have um, the Gam we have Gamru, and they are responsible for collecting the the royalties of musicians in Ghana. But we have other external bodies. Um, it's, it's a free market and it's an open market. So we have um, like the ASCAP, we have BMI, we have uh, CSAG, we have PRS, 
and and other bodies mm -hmm. that are responsible for uh, collecting these royalties so as an artist you need to get signed up with some of these people sign a contract with them have an agreement and they will collect your royalties on your behalf based on a percentage that um, the publishing rights organization is going to strike with the artist be it 50 50 uh, or in some countries as otherwise so, yeah so basically mm, that's okay. it and let's say that if I want to get into the publishing industry, yeah. what are some of the things that I need to know I need to know and do? Okay, so first of all, you need to know the types of um, uh, publishing rights. All right. um, so we have um, majorly three types. So the first type is um, the first type is we have the performance royalties, we have the mechanical royalties, then we have the um, the syncing uh, license, you know, synchronization license. And with the mechanical royalties, that's when, um, for example, somebody does a copy of your song or a cover of your song. You see these mashups people have been doing. Yeah. So then because people are using your song, they are using your intellectual property for commercial purposes to, for their own gain. So you need to get rights of that. So that's basically mechanical royalties then you have uh, performance royalties performance royalties uh, simply means that um if uh, they are playing your song somewhere you know and they are using it commercially for for something you know it could be um, a pop it could be um, a program somewhere or even a playlist on uh, some of these streaming services once they are playing it publicly then they need to pay a quota you know for using your song publicly you know that's performance royalties then you have synchronizing um, um, synchronizing um, license and that, what that means is that um, on television or radio when they use your song for a particular advert you know for commercial purposes they need to give you a quota All right. you know for using your music um, like you see some of these adverts, they use um, other people's songs for all of that. It means that then the people that have done their adverts for commercial purposes on TV or radio need to contact the, the composer or that has the original rights to the song and then strike a deal with the person, an agreeable something, sign a contract, and they can now use it for whatever commercial purposes they want to use it for. Yeah. Okay. So with the, um, you, you said mechanism or mechanic. Mechanical. Mechanical. Yes. With a mechanical um, type of yeah. publishing yeah. or royalties. Um, you said that when people do co um, covers for your yeah. songs, yeah. which is people trying to also sing their versions of the song, yes. you need to get something out of it. Yes. How? Is it the people paying or how do you yeah, get Yeah, the people have to pay. It? So if you are assigned um, to a publisher, right if you are assigned to a publisher uh, the publisher is responsible for collecting these royalties you know so for that particular purpose if somebody has done a cover of your song then when the person releases a song without your knowledge then your the publishing rights organization that you are signed up with will collect those royalties on your behalf right. yes so that's how it works so they go around collecting your royalties you have nothing to do with it you just you know um, lay low, stay cool, and they just bring your money to you. That's okay. how it works. Okay. Yes. So when you learn all of these things, mm -hmm. what do you do next? Because you still want to be in the publishing industry. So what happens is that as a musician, um, that is actually your um, retirement plan. That's how I call it. You know, publishing is the musician's retirement plan. Right. So um, once you have these things, these publishing things in place, you have the knowledge of it, then you have to take the first step by signing up with a CMO, a collection management organization, or signing up with a, a publishing rights organization. When you sign up with them, they, there's a number called an IPI number. And that particular number is the number of identification of whatever, whatever thing that you are going to release. That is the number that identifies your product. So anytime somebody uses your song uh, for, for commercial purposes, that number appears below it. And then they collect the royalties on your behalf. All right. So you can actually, there are instances where you can actually use somebody's beats 
like those who use don't uh, go to producers to compose something from scratch for them and then they download um, uh, uh, beats that are already copyrighted you know all of that when you do that and you upload it even on YouTube you see that because the, the original owner of that particular beat owns the song and has a publisher you see a long message under whatever the person has posted be it a video or an audio and then it means the more plays the person plays it without your knowledge they get the royalties the original composer gets the royalties and you that have used the person's beat gets nothing that's how it works so the publishing rights organization or the collection management organization um, collects your royalties on your behalf that's if you are signed up with them yeah hmm. i still w want to know how the whole money system thing work yeah because if people are playing your songs so let's let's use this typical example okay let's say that we are playing one of your music here at showbiz TV. okay your publisher will come for money from we the organization exactly in cash or through transaction oh through you. Uh, transaction so they will actually call you or send you a message you know by via email or something that okay so our uh, system has um has just noticed that you've played um our artist's song our client's song on your television station and it's been used for commercial purposes so you are supposed to pay a fee of so so and so for playing their music on air okay yes okay. that's how it works right so it means then um that in Ghana, for instance, there's a huge problem because we have a lot of people playing, right. um, a, a lot of stations playing people's music, like, you know, on television and on radio. So it means that a lot of musicians actually don't have the adequate knowledge of publishing and copyright. You know, because if they have the adequate knowledge, then they should really be cashing out. Unlike now that uh, in Ghana, for instance, the major form of making money, of a musician making money, is by um, performing their songs on shows and all that. So they can give them upfront, um, you know, pay or uh, streaming services. Apart from that, it ends there. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, publishing is supposed to be like the major thing that feeds you daily. Because day in and day out, a lot of people use musicians' content, you know. So the means of getting paid off all these things, uh, actually publishing is like the remedy that can, you know, really help musicians earn more money from what they do. Right. Yes. And talking about feeding people daily, mm -hmm. if um, publishers mm -hmm. are helping artists get value for their work, let yeah. me put it that yeah. way, who pays the publisher? So this is how it works. So you sign up with a, a publishing rights organization, mm. and then the publishing rights organization collects a percentage of whatever royalties they collect on your behalf. So if, um, let's say I'm signed up with a BMI, or I'm signed up with Gamro, Gamro has a percentage they take and uh, against what they collect on your be for you on your behalf. So if um, it's a 50%, 50%, it means whatever royalties they collect, 50% of that royalties goes to the publishing rights organization and 50% goes to me, the person that is the original composer of the song. So that's how it works. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And how can an independent artist also publish their song? So it's, it's simple. Um, uh, you can just get signed up with a publishing rights organization or a collection management organization. Um, okay. Like one of the people, uh, some of the people I mentioned, like uh, ASCAP, uh, BMI, um, even Gamro, you know, sign up with them to collect your royalties on your behalf, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You sign a contract with them, and then they, you strike a percentage. They have a, a fixed percentage they actually strike. Mm -hmm. You have that, and then you are, you are good to go. But what do they look out for, like the publishers? Mm -hmm. When you want to work with them, what do they look out for? So, actually, publishers is, is like an, an open range thing. Okay. It's a free market, you know. So, publishers really don't look at anything. It's rather the musicians that should look okay. out for the publishers, you know, because um, at the end of the day, 
with a publishing right organization, it means there's a lot of data that the publishing right organization or collection mm -hmm. management organization need to actually be able to collect your royalties. For example, you have, um, you release your music in Ghana, you are signed up with a publishing right organization. But one of the things as an artist that you should ask yourself is that does the publishing right organization or collection management organization have the muscle to actually collect my royalties, not just in Ghana, but can collect um, in Nigeria, can collect in the US of A, can collect in um, different countries at the same time. Because then they can collect my royalties just in Ghana. But how about Nigeria? So is the publishing right organization that um, I'm signed up with have the muscle enough or have the resources enough to collect in other countries? Otherwise, what's the essence of just collecting my royalties in Ghana? And then I have a major hit in another country. You, you get what I'm saying? So as an artist, you need to do your proper research. And also, based on your, um, your niche and based on your, um, the, your, 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 fan, your fan base, you can also look at um, uh, the kind of publishing rights organization that is suitable for you so that um, the proper collection of your royalties can be collected on your behalf. Okay. That, that's good to know. But you also know that we are in a digital era. Yeah. So how has that also impacted publishing in the Ghanaian music industry? So um, let, me, let me backtrack a bit. Right. So you know in the uh, 20th century, right. they used to have something we call sheet publishing music. You know? Right. Um, so in those days, what they used to do is that um, before digitalization, what happens is that, okay, so if I'm a musician and I release a song, right, um, publishers actually come f for the composition of the song and they print it in books. They call them song books. And then they distribute it to shops so that people can use it. And out of the sale of the books, the quota they get, they pay the original composer for the number of, of books, books that have been purchased right. based on your composition. You know, so it's like selling a book and then paying the person who wrote, you know, the, the author of the book, paying the author of the book, basically that. But when digitalization came, it's the same thing. It has just moved from um, the sheets, um, 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 you know, publishing to digitalization. That's um, being signed up with a, a PRO, a publishing right organization or a CMO. CMO. So it has just moved. It's, there's nothing that has changed about it. The major focus now is to just collect the um, um, royalties of musicians. And it has made it very easy because of digitalization. Now, um, if I'm going to, um, if I'm in Ghana and I'm an uh, international artist and I'm signed up to a publishing, international publishing rights organization like uh, BMI, I can register from Ghana by just logging on onto my PC and then signing up with them doing um filling the forms that i have to fill submit it and that is it i can be in ghana and be getting my royalties it's as simple as that so digitalization has really really helped you know um right. musicians to actually get signed up with a pr or a cmo okay and i know that you are also an artist now that yeah. i know i'll be disturbing you <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, so when it comes to publishing, yeah. what are some of the key challenges that local artists also face when it comes to publishing? I think um, the problem here, like I said earlier on, is the proper sensitization of um, the music business in right. general. Majorly, I will talk about um, publishing. The issues that musicians have is that they don't have the adequate information of um, what they have to know about publishing in the music industry. Not just publishing, the other things like copyright, like the other time we spoke about it, um, that uh, musicians actually don't have proper information. Here's the thing. Um, if you are entering into any form of business, you need the proper information of that particular business right. to be able to thrive through that particular business because definitely you have competitors and all of that but if you don't have the proper information and you don't you've not done the proper documentation of what right. you have to do 
how do you then thrive in that particular form of business? You know, and that's the, the problem we have as musicians. Um, I think our major problem is that we are not educated properly on the music business. We just focus on the skill. And then in quotes, I say in quotes again, um, branding. I just have to look fly on social media, <laughs> numbers, and that's it. It ends there. No. When you take music as a musician, if you just have the skill and you don't have adequate knowledge in the music business, it's a zero. You know, it's nothing. You need the skill and you need the music business before you can even do music. Otherwise, there's no, there's no end to it. It's the reason why nowadays we hear um, a lot of scenarios of some of our legends being broke, you know, and they just die like that because they don't have the adequate knowledge of some of these things, publishing, copyright, and all of that, you know. So that is our problem. Um, musicians need to have the proper education on the music business before they even venture into the music business. Otherwise, <laughs> into music <laughs> itself. Otherwise, at the end of the day, it won't be a, a nice story, you know. Okay. Like, we, we get to hear some musicians um, living large, living good, and at the end of the day, nothing whatsoever. And we don't understand. The problem is we, it has to do with we, the artists. We need to learn and then do our due diligence. Yeah. Okay. And talking about stories, mm -hmm. can you also share with us any like success stories of artists who were able to effectively manage their pul um, publishing, um, I don't know how to put it, publishing music or their music in terms of publishing? Success stories regarding yes. effective management of publishing. Yes. So, um, yes, they are, they are success stories. Okay. The thing is that... Um, I'll, I'll try as much <laughs> as possible not to mention it. I'll, well, I'll try. Right. But um, someone like uh, an Ghanaian artist, he's Baza, but now Blitz, right. and he's international. I remember mm -hmm. he's been releasing a lot of songs, right. and he's huge in the international arena. But people don't know him in Ghana here. Right. Why, don't, uh, why is it that people don't know him in Ghana here? The problem is that he has a publisher right he has a publisher so because he has his things published you can't just play his things on radio you can't just play his things on um, tv you need permission from his pro his cm to play those things on television and he's one of the most successful musicians that have come out of ghana most successful musicians wow. yeah and when you go out there he's popular like well known. Even currently, I think the 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 I don't know whether you've heard about uh, Oprah's movie. Right. The, the color purple. Col of, right. He directed that movie. Oh wow. Yeah, that's how. The huge, color purple. That's how huge Blitz the ambassador is, you know. Wow. And he's from Ghana. <laughs> you see, so there are people that have their paperwork right. The fact that you don't see some of these people on television doesn't mean. You know, um, there are people that are not earning of music. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that earn of music. Someone like Amare, she has a lot of music because she has a publishing, she has a paperwork, she has everything cut out for her. Another major factor that um, affects um, artists when it comes to publishing uh, might be even the reason why uh, most musicians don't get deals, international deals outside the country. Because if you have your, if you work with big corporations like uh, Coca Cola, you work with um, some major like big shots, you know, you need um, on the contract, whatever contract you are going to sign with them, you must have a publisher, you must have an IPI number so that they know who to pay what to. So if you don't have your publishing right, you don't have your paperwork. Trust me, is the reason why most artists in Ghana don't have. Um, their works, um, like international recognition based on their works. Yeah. I see. Then it means that they, there's a lot that they have to do when it comes to publishing. Yeah. Because um, they keep complaining. And yeah. we keep blaming um, Gamro, for an example. <laughs> um, they are the major distributing um, yeah. company yeah. here in Ghana. Yeah. So we tend to blame them a lot. Yeah. 
but I think now we know why some people are not getting their royalties. So maybe yes. we should also do our assignments or homeworks well. Yeah. That way when we are talking, we'll talk with our full chest <laughs> and we'll know that mm -hmm. we've done our parts and they also yeah. have to do their part. Yeah. So with regards to that, what is it that right now musicians need to do in terms of publishing? What is the education or how can you educate us? So what musicians need to know is that, you see, um, when you talk about music, right. there's the skill aspect of it. There's the business aspect, uh, aspect of it. There are two things, the skill and the business aspect. We shouldn't just focus on the skill. That's what we are doing currently. We need to also focus on the business aspect of music. When you talk about the business aspect of m music, we are talking about content. We are talking about um, uh, issues on publishing, uh, copyright. They should research. They need to research, know the pros and cons of what is, and then do their due diligence. And trust me, every musician will be fine. We won't be having issues um, on radio, television, people talking about the fact that, okay, they wrote this song for somebody, and they, um, and they own the rights to it, but they don't have paperwork to prove what they are saying, to back whatever they are saying. You know, we only have issues of someone saying, okay, I wrote this part of the song, and you've not done your paperwork. You know, recently I saw a lady on um, Instagram talking about the fact that she wrote songs, she has written most of Rihanna's hits, she has written most of um, Beyonce's hits. My issue is that, do you have the paperwork back in the whole thing? Because then if you have the paperwork, you won't come out and say that. Because you'll be, be, you'll be actually paid your royalties for writing the song if you have your paperwork right you wouldn't come out out of heads and all of that saying okay you wrote the song where's the paperwork there's nothing to show legally so my thing is that musicians need the right <laughs> education on publishing it's not far-fetched these things i'm saying is not it's not far-fetched you know you can hop on to google and just go and type what is publishing in music you, the, we need to read we need to be educated about what our craft is um, I don't think someone else should learn about these things and uh, come and teach um, as the musicians. As musicians, we need, because it's our craft, we need to study about it and then do our due diligence and we are, we are good to go. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good to know. And it's good to have you here again. Thank and you. as usual, you're always educating us. Thank you. And I think a lot of musicians need to actually be coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> actually, they do. They do. I get calls like back to back mm. like, every, every day. Every um, um, the Through Eminence, the Eminence Awards, um, Chilky Media, I handle the Eastern Region Musicians Forum. Mm. Um, all of them. So I sit there, I teach like hours, you know. Mm. on these same things they call me I, I get a lot of calls even with uh, contracts and all of that and there are people that you can see that there are people that don't have the knowledge and they are willing to learn as for some of our artists <laughs> you know they are not even willing to they, right. they have no idea whatsoever right. you know but this is nothing new under the sun it's something that has been there from like <laughs> So we need to um, get a proper education so that we don't uh, find ourselves uh, wanting. No, yeah. Okay, what will be your final words for us today? And then you can add your social media handles or how we can reach you if someone needs more advice. Yes, so my final words today is that um, publishing is the musician's retirement plan. Publishing is the musician's right. retirement plan. Um, as a musician, you, you need to do your, your due diligence. You need to do every paperwork that has to do with your music, anything concerning the music business. You need to get it straight before you, you go out there and then do your music commercially. You don't want to do music over a long period of time. And then at the end of the day, you have not earned royalties off like your lifetime's work. That, that would be the most painful thing for an artist to go through. So I think um, we need to do our due diligence and we are good to go. And of course, um, uh, I will encourage everybody to watch Showbase TV. And I, I thank you guys so much because um, issues on 
publishing copyright, we need a lot of sensitization. So even for us talking um, about these things on Showbase TV, it's, 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 it's really good. And it, it will go a long way to help musicians. So I commend you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Please, your social media handles. Okay, so um, The Real Paul God, that's The Real Paul God um, on Instagram, um, X, that's Twitter, and um, TikTok. And then Paul God, PaulG.O.D on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, thank you once again for joining us. And yeah, thank, thank you, you, my cherished year, for sticking and staying with me throughout the whole show. I'm always grateful to you and I appreciate you so much. And I always tell you that I love you, right? Okay, and remember, we were live on our Facebook and on our YouTube at Showbiz TV. If you're an Android user, I always say that you are the lucky one because you can download the Showbiz TV app on the Google Play Store so you can take us wherever you go when you just do that. It's a simple process, so please, you know how to download your favorite apps on the Google Play Store. So do well to add Showbiz TV app to your favorite apps as well so that wherever you go, you can have access to us. Um, and the simplest, you know, click or tap, you just have Strobis TV and you're watching whatever we are doing here in the studio. A special thank you going out to my executive producers. I appreciate you so much to my producer. Thank you. And to the entire team and the crew. I love you guys so much. Thank you for always holding me down. And once again to you, my change here. Thank you. Um, do enjoy the rest of our programs. I'll see you same time tomorrow. Bye. Early in the morning, dawn of a new day, new hopes, new dreams.